Hi, I am Dr. Julie Brown, your Carrick trained concussion doctor and board certified chiropractic neurologist. Today I'm going to talk about car accidents and concussions. I see many patients who have been in a car accident and many times they have a concussion. I get referrals from other doctors because I love to work with concussion and help these patients. And it's my job to identify one, that they did in fact sustain a concussion and two, that it's from the accident. Now understand that a concussion is more of a dynamic diagnosis. diagnosis. It's a change in function of the brain. So whoever is evaluating it better know the details of how the brain works. If you're in a car accident, you can imagine it's different than if two bodies collide playing football or soccer. There's not as much momentum and power, and I think we're a little more uh, safe when it's human to human versus car to car. There's a lot of magnitude of force that goes into a car accident. So even a little hit can make your head whip back and forth and therefore allow that brain to whip back and forth in the skull and irritate neurons, tug neurons, break blood vessels, and no, you do not have to hit your head to have sustained a concussion in a car accident. So we want to identify, the doctor needs to identify appropriately one, if he sustained a concussion and if it's from the car accident. Sometimes I have patients that immediately have symptoms from a concussion, either they've had one before and so they can recognize it, or two, they just don't feel right. And sometimes I have patients who immediately have symptoms and then the symptoms kind of subside because the brain has adapted, maybe not appropriately, and more often than not, not appropriately. And then they all of a sudden start getting headaches months out even, or balance problems or cognitive problems or anxiety or mood changes. These are all things that could show up later as more of a post-concussive syndrome that could have happened from a car accident. It really depends on the person because I have some people that just absolutely deny injury and they try to explain away everything. And then I have all the way from that spectrum to the other spectrum where they think everything is from the car accident and an injury. And sometimes that's not necessarily the case. So some of these patients have had MRIs I don't usually MRI the brain unless I think there's something big going on, but MRIs tend to be negative for concussion. It's possible that somebody could have sent you for an SWI, a DWI, in which they look at the vasculature of the brain and can see something active and, and locate it and say this was from the accident. It's also possible to get a functional MRI that looks at tracks and maybe they'll see a, a concussion. But it's also possible to have those done, have them be negative, and you still sustained a concussion. So you really wanna, again, go back to the function of the brain and look at eye movements, pupillary reflex, balance, neurological exam. I also need to identify the subjective complaints. You know, if a patient has headaches, did they have headaches before? How frequent were they? What's the intensity? Is the location different? And identify and see if they correlate with with a change and being from the accident. So that is the doctor's job, know how to identify and then really know what to do to help these patients. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me at the website below. If you like this information, go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks.